I'm going to read. So we are reading from Ezra, and Ezra chapter 8, we shall read the first and the second verse, and then skip some verses, 15, 21, and 23. Here's what the Bible says in New International Version. These are the family heads and those registered with them who came up with me from Babylon during the reign of King Artaxerxes, of the descendants of Phinehas, Geshom, of the descendants of Itama, Daniel, of the descendants of David, Hattush. Verse 15, I assembled them at the canal that flows toward Ahava, and we camped there three days. When I checked among the people and the priests, I found no Levites there. And then verse 21, There by the Ahava Canal, I proclaimed a fast, so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. 23, So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayers. Precious Lord, we thank you for the honor and privilege of hearing your word today. May this message come as a message from God as we start this journey. May you grant your servant correctness of thought and simplicity of speech. And may you minister to the heart of the hearer that receives the word that the word shall be activated in the hearts of your people. It shall be put into action for results. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I've entitled the message, The Journey into the Unknown. The Journey into the Unknown. When you start a new year from the first day of January, you have just launched a journey into the unknown. Depending on what type of year it is, this journey will take you 365 or 366 days. It is a journey into the unknown because everything ahead of you is uncertain. If you are with me, say amen. Biblical wisdom has revealed to us how to deal with the journey into unknown. And that is what we are going to be looking at this morning on this first day, on this first Sunday of the year 2021. The story that we read in Ezra chapter 8 is about a man called Ezra who was leading the children of Israel from Babylon. They had lived in Babylon for 80 years as exiles, and now they were headed back to Jerusalem, their homeland. According to 2 Timothy, I mean 2 Kings chapter 25, where the story begins, Israel had sinned against God. As a consequence for their sin, God sent the Babylonians, who were the most ruthless and the most feared at that time. They invaded the city of Jerusalem, demolished the city walls, which were a symbol of protection, burned their houses to the ground, including the temple of God and the king's palace. Everything burned to the ground. The strong, the healthy, and the wealthy of the land, they took as captives to Babylon, leaving behind only the sick, the weak, and the poor. That was the Babylonians' military strategy. When they invaded your land, they took the best and left the weak behind. In the passage we read, time had now come for Israel to return home to Jerusalem from Babylon. The journey would take four months on foot, on donkeys, and along with them, they were to be carrying possessions which they had acquired in Babylon. Ezra 
was the man leading them on this adventurous journey. With 80 years having passed since they had left Jerusalem, their home, these people had two possible things to worry about concerning this journey. Number one, the journey itself. Number two, the city of Jerusalem to which they were returning. The journey was long. And having not traveled this road for 80 years, they were taking a big risk. The journey could have enemies along the way, maybe robbers or wild animals to attack them. These were possibilities. But along with that, the city of Jerusalem, which they left behind, to which they were now returning, could have changed. The relatives they left could have all died. The city itself could have been occupied by a strange people. Or it could have become a deserted city, a jungle, with no one living in it except wild birds and animals. All that lay ahead of Israel as they embarked on this journey was unknown. And therefore, they were embarking on a journey into the unknown. Due to uncertainty that lay ahead of them on this journey, Ezra, their leader, decided to do something which I believe every person who launches in the unknown should do. He proclaimed a fast for himself and for the people that were traveling with him. The Bible says in Ezra chapter 8 verse 21, There by the Ahava canal I proclaimed a fast, so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. The unknown that lay ahead of this journey prompted the leader to do something, and that is to fast. I think this was a very good initiative and there are lessons to learn here. He has a bunch of people to lead and he says before we start on this journey, I mean we have not been this route before in 80 years. Maybe there are robbers on the way or maybe there are dangerous animals that are waiting to attack and the journey itself is long. Also, the people that we left, we don't know what has happened. We are launching into the unknown. All we know is what we have. But ahead of us, everything is bleak. And so he says, I'm not going to embark on this journey into the unknown until I fast. So he called everybody and organized a fast. And for one day, they were in the presence of the Lord fasting and praying. On this fast, Ezra did two things. Number one, he humbled himself before God. Number two, he asked God for safety of the journey. And the Bible says in Ezra chapter 8 verse 23, So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayer. From Ezra's experience, we learn that every journey into the unknown starts with fasting and prayer. The year 2021, which started three days ago, trust me, church, is a journey into the unknown. Maybe let me ask this question. How many of you know how 2021 shall be? Lift your hand. I can't see anybody. You and I right now are faced with a journey into the unknown. There are 363 days ahead of us and all of which are filled with uncertainty. And this journey has just begun. None of us has been to February 2021 before. You do not have a slightest idea of what lies ahead of the year, what lies ahead of the week or each month that comes, you and I know absolutely nothing. So we find ourselves in the same place that Ezra was in with his people that was leading. So this man is faced with this journey, and he says, I'm going to pray. 
Now, how he handled the journey into the unknown is God's wisdom that we should learn today. The days we live in are changing. It is even becoming difficult to plan for those that are good planners. As I've been speaking with pastors, it is becoming very clear that those who planned two years ahead of time, they cannot do that anymore. Why? Because everything is becoming so uncertain. I was sharing with someone, I said, you know, nowadays I can only plan on a weekly basis. Can you imagine? It is difficult to have a long projection of what's going to happen. What the nature of the days we live in leave us in the position that Ezra was in. We are headed on a journey into the unknown. Just like Ezra, there are other Bible heroes who launched into the unknown who also fasted. Why? Because that's the way to do it according to biblical prescription. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, he fasted and prayed for 40 days at the start of his ministry. The Apostle Paul, according to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15 to 17, he was in isolation in the Arabian desert with God for three years before the start of his ministry journey. That is how the great apostle who has written most of the Bible books started his journey. Moses, according to Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 9, he fasted for 40 days before receiving the tablets of the Ten Commandments that would launch Israel on a new path of living by God's law. Esther is another character. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16, she fasted three days before approaching the king to plead for the liberation of the Jewish people who needed to have a new start as a free people. Every journey into the unknown is an occasion for seeking God with fasting and with prayer. This is what the Bible is telling us, church. Every religion on earth has got some rituals which they observe. That is what makes them who they are. I was sharing with my kids last night about the Muslims who go on a month of Ramadan. What are they doing? They are fasting for a month. And they have to travel far and wide to Mecca to worship there. What you and I have is what we see with Ezra. Every journey into the unknown starts with fasting. Seeking the face of God. Making petitions to him. We are to fast and when we do, our fasting should have two things in mind. Which are listed in Ezra chapter 8 verse 21. There by the Ahava canal, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. In that verse, we see two things that Ezra did while he fasted. And I think that is defining what fasting is. Because sometimes all we do is to go on a diet. And once we are done, at the end of it, we label it a fast to feel good about ourselves. No, there is something to do while you fast. In that verse, those two things are number one, to humble yourself before God. That's the first thing in a fast. And number two, to ask God. Fasting at the start of the journey into the unknown is for the purpose of dedicating your time and your energy to humbling yourself before God and to asking. Humbling yourself before God is an attitude of the heart. It means to quietly submit yourself to God and to his will. Total submission. Without your pride standing in the way. The language of humbling yourself is one of acknowledging your own helplessness while at the same time acknowledging God's power and ability. A man named Jehoshaphat in the Bible demonstrated how humbling yourself before God looks like. This is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 12. This was the time when Jehoshaphat was confronted with enemies. Different kingdoms 
made an alliance to go against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat and his people were threatened at this enemy that is coming against them. So he decided to humble himself before God and he prayed. Now listen to how he prayed. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 12. Oh our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. That right there is the language and attitude of humbling yourself before God. Oh my God, I am powerless to be alone on this journey. Acknowledging your own helplessness. I do not know how and what to do, but I am looking to you for help. That is humbling yourself before God. We are to put our pride aside and place ourselves at the mercy of God alone who is able and capable. Ezra started his fast by humbling himself first and foremost. He understood that as with any spiritual discipline, it is possible to fast without the right heart. In that case, fasting becomes but an empty ritual and God won't even notice it. It starts there. So as we are talking about launching a fast today at 6 p.m., that is the place to start right there. The journey into the unknown starts with fasting, where the heart presents its, itself before God with humility. It was after Ezra had humbled himself that he was now ready to ask. And I know there are so many things that you wish for as the year 2021 unfolds. The country I come from, January is a time when people make resolutions. I remember my elder brother, he said, this year I would like to stop drinking. And he was very determined about that. And he put a certain course of action to achieve that goal. I went to church, I found some other people, I want to achieve this, I want to achieve that during this year. Now I know that each one of us, as we sit here, there are some things that we plan to achieve during the year. But hear me, church, it is after you have declared a fast, humbled yourself before God, that now you are in a position to begin asking. So in Ezra 8 verse 21, there by the Ahava Canal, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. Ezra was very specific in asking during his fast. He asked God for the safety of his journey, for himself, for the people in his company, and also for the possessions they were carrying with them. Safety. So that whole day, when they were fasting, this is what they were into. This is so important, church. Think about a people that are prepared to go on a journey, and they decide not to go, but to spend a whole day talking to God. It gets as serious as that when we deal with the journeys into the unknown. Ezra and the people with him needed protection. It was a journey into the unknown and the danger ahead of them was very real. There was a constant threat of robbers and bandits in those days. And especially because they were carrying possessions which they had gathered in Babylon, they needed protection for their goods from bandits on the road. Ezra fasted to ask God for safety and for protection. What do you have in your heart which you want to ask? The journey into the unknown calls for fasting. 
In your fasting, you humble yourself before God. And after that, you ask. And why do we ask God? Because God has already gone ahead of your journey before you even start it. The Bible says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I already knew you. He already predetermined the, the, the number of days that we shall live on earth. The journey to travel, God saw it way before you were born. And that puts God to be in a position where he's the one you ask. Because he has seen you on the journey before you get started. He has already seen what you will encounter. He already knows exactly what you need to survive, what you need to be successful, and what you need to reach your final destination. God knows it all. Therefore, in your fasting, he is the one to be asking. And as I say this, every one of us, as we sit in the presence of the Lord, it's time to begin formulating a list of things that you're going to ask. Because the fast begins today at 6 p.m. You are to ask because it pleases God. Ask him for protection and for safety. When I was in the eighth grade in Zambia, my uncle, who I call my dad, was promoted. So he was to go on promotion to another province. It was a huge move for us as a family. We had lived in Lusaka, the capital city, all our days. But it was time to go to Western province to a town called Mongo. And my dad was to occupy an office as a man that was promoted. Here's what happened. He called our relatives that were nearby to come and have a farewell. Now, what I remember correctly, as young as I was at that time, is that each one of these relatives spoke a blessing. They were asking God to do something for us as we went on this journey to a province that we had, we had never been. It was so strange. That, that's the place where Nancy comes from. We couldn't speak the language in that province. We were wondering how we're going to make it because of communication barrier. So as the relatives invoked a blessing on us, they asked God for specific things to become our portion. And each one of us made those utterances. And after that, we got into the vehicle and we drove. Nine hours drive. When you fast, you are to humble yourself and then ask. Ask him for protection and for safety. Ask him for empowerment, including courage and strength, wisdom and insight. Ask him. Ask him to remove obstacles that may be waiting for you and to give you access to your desired destination. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 2, you do not have because you do not ask. And then Matthew 7 verse 8 says, For everyone who asks, receives. So God is waiting for you to ask. Any person who humbles himself, buys God's attention to listen to them. And to release to them what they are asking. Because when you humble yourself, you are already in an atmosphere that attracts God's presence to come. So in that place, you can now ask. As we notice from the Bible, God has repeatedly asked us to ask. And he loves it when we ask. It is a sign that you have humbled yourself before him. It is a sign that you trust his generosity to give. It is a sign of your dependency upon him. All this is pleasing to God. This is what Ezra did at the start of his journey into the unknown. 
And the Bible says in Ezra 8 verse 23, So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayer. God answered this man's prayer because he did what should be done to attract God to come into your situation. He had humbled himself. And because God wants us to ask, he asked. And the Bible says, God released to him the very thing that he asked. What is it that you need from God? What would you like 2021 to be as you start this journey? What do you envision? God is already prepared to meet you where you are. And so at the beginning of this year, how we launch into the unknown is to fast. This is the wisdom that we learn from Ezra. Now there are different ways we can fast as we launch into the unknown. And that depends on your level of growth spiritually and of course on your health status. The 21-day fast that starts today at 6 p.m. is one that has commonly come to be known as the Daniel fast. Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 and 3 says, At that time I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food. No meat or wine touched my lips. And I used no lotion at all until the three weeks were over. We call it the Daniel fast because it takes after the way Daniel fasted. During this fast, Daniel did the following. The Bible says he mourned. Mourning is a sign of humbling yourself to God and then praying to him. It is a sign of helplessness and bringing yourself in the presence of the Almighty God who alone has the capacity and the power. That's what Daniel did. He humbled himself. Number two, the Bible says he ate no choice food for three weeks. Now, choice food looks different from people to people. <laughs> for three weeks, Daniel was on a diet different from what he normally ate. Whatever he ate did not include meat. It didn't include wine for pleasure. It didn't include rich foods. This was not the first time that Daniel had done this fast. The first time he did it is in Daniel chapter 1 verse 12. Where he ate only vegetables and drank water for 10 days. The Daniel fast, therefore, is a partial fast whose concept we get from this diet devised by Daniel. There are other fasts. Some of them are supernatural fasts. A supernatural fast is one where the Lord specifically tells you, the Bible tells us about Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 that he was led by the Holy Spirit to go into the wilderness and that's why he fasted. So for 40 days, 40 nights, he didn't eat. That is a supernatural fast because he was told by the Holy Ghost. Nancy and I did a supernatural fast for three days where we, we only drank water for three days, I am telling you the results that came out of that fast are unimaginable. I, I was just, my mind was just blown. So where are you at spiritually? Where are you at in terms of your health? This 21-day Daniel fast is something that you devise according to the place where you are. It is difficult to put a general rule because people are different places. The goal is to deny the flesh so as to focus on the spirit by which you increase your time of prayer and your time of meditation. So when you are fasting, you are not only staying away from food. You are dedicating much of your time to prayer and to meditation. We were sharing with our children last night that during the 21-day fast, which is starting today, you have to cut down on your electronics. Watch 
what you watch. Pay attention to your habits and dedicate your time to meditation and to seeking the face of God. That is how that is the goal of fasting as opposed to just staying out from, 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 from food. When Ezra and his company fasted, this is what they were doing. They stayed away from food and they, they were seeking the face of God. They said, we shall not eat today because ahead of us is a journey into the unknown. We shall be in the presence of God. And all the time of that day was dedicated to being in the presence of God. This was their focus. And that is to be our focus as we go into the fast. God was touched by this approach and he gave a positive response because we see in verse 23, the Bible says, after they fasted, God answered their prayer. And what prayer was that? The prayer for safety and protection. They seek the face of God. Lord, we are launching on a dangerous mission. We are carrying with us children and possessions that will, attra will attract bandits. We ask you, Lord, come and be in our midst. Guide us on this journey. Protect us from anything risky and dangerous on the Lord. The whole day they were praying. And the Bible says, God answered their prayer. They felt safe to travel into the unknown. They also felt safe about the journey itself. Whatever insecurities they might have had, they no longer had those insecurities because God, through that prayer, dealt with their fears. And he also dealt with whatever it was that lay ahead of them. So they were able to travel until they reached their destination. I submit to you, church, that your journey into the unknown has just begun. Right this moment at the beginning, you can determine what you will get. It is all in the presence of God. If you will choose only to sacrifice a period of time and begin to seek God for your journey, the Lord will do as he did to this man Ezra. This is why we learn the wisdom. So where are you at? This is the invitation that we have from God. We won't always fast, but we have an opportunity. We are in a pandemic right now. We are uncertain what is going to happen. We are in the moment of uncertainty. But we know one that possesses all the knowledge. We can consult him. In his presence, we'll be able to hear how we should walk this journey 2021. In his presence, we shall get empowered regarding this journey and it will surprise you that before you know it you will look back and count the blessings of God during the year 2021 so let us pray as we close this morning and I believe that God has spoken to you you are challenged to go and do something so our fast starts tonight at 6 so for this first week starting today up to next Sunday, it will be a week of humbling yourself before God. You will not make intercession, you know, for things and for governments and presidents. You'll be humbling yourself. It's your week to soak yourself in the presence of God. Like David would say, search me, O God, and know my anxious thoughts. Search me, O God. It is a week of consecration, personal consecration. It is a week of introspection where you look into your life. What are the things spiritually in me that would hinder God moving into my life? This week of the fast, you shall be doing personal introspection and you shall be searching your heart. So let's pray as we end the service today. I would like you to stand wherever you are. And for those of you that are in the homes, if you can stand, please do stand with us. As we pray, we are standing before the presence of the Lord who is inviting us to humbling ourselves before him as we launch into the unknown. Father, we thank you 
that your word is forever established. All things shall pass away, but your word shall stand. We thank you that, Lord, we, your children, belong to an army that sheds no blood, because Jesus Christ has already overcome. We thank you because the plans you have for us are good. They are plans to prosper us, to give us a future and an expected end. In you there is no defeat, there is no failure. You have already gone ahead of us of this journey into the unknown. You already know what is awaiting us as we journey. Therefore, Lord, you are the one whose face we seek. We pray, dear Holy Spirit, that you sanctify us unto this fast. I pray for everyone that is in the house today and those that are listening from home. Lord, I pray that you empower us to pray and to seek your face. Empower us supernaturally that, God, we shall not feel hungry, we shall not feel weak. Lord, each day that passes into the fast, we shall be growing stronger. We shall be changing into the likeness of Jesus Christ. We pray that the chains that have bound our lives shall fall in Jesus' name. We pray that breakthrough spiritually shall happen in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that God who shall release the heavens, the heavens above us shall remain open and we shall receive every spiritual blessing. We pray, dear Holy Spirit, tune our hearts to the right attitude and teach us to pray. Let every prayer that we, that we pray during the fast be sanctified by you, that our prayers shall be acceptable in the sight of God. So, Father, I pray for the weak and for the strong that will release your grace. We sanctify, dear Lord, this day, starting at 6 to the 24th of January, 6 o'clock, we sanctify this period as a period of fasting. We dedicate it to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for those who cannot fast, Lord, we pray they shall be covered by the prayers of those who pray and fast. And together, Lord, we shall receive the blessings of God. Now bless this church, bless your people, that this year, Lord, shall be full of victory. We shall emerge victorious in everything, and we shall see the glory of God manifest in the midst of us. And so we declare in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Let's give him a hand in the house. May the Lord bless you, church, including the online audience. So we have a time of prayer for those that may be needing prayer. We are going to be here for a short while. We want to pray for you. Or if you are new in the Lord, you need an explanation about how you can do your fast. We shall be a little while just to help you. You shouldn't feel intimidated because you can do it. God bless you.